And welcome back to Straight Talk. I'm Chris Willis filling in this week for Laurel. And we are talking today with Oregon Attorney General Ellen Rosenblum. Welcome back. And we have many issues we're talking about that are going on as far as legislation during the session. And one of them concerns debt buyers and, and something that people have been involved in this know a lot about. Tell us about this legislation and why it's important. Right. Well, when you get a when you get sued yeah. for a debt, you'd like to know what the debt is. You'd like to know how much you owe. You'd like to know who the actual creditor is. Yes. And when someone buys a debt called debt buyers, when they buy a debt from a creditor, then uh, it's no longer the creditor to whom you owe the money. It's the debt buyer. And it's very confusing to people. And there's currently really little or no regulation in terms of what the debt buyer, when they sue you, has to tell you. Right. We have a bill that would actually inform the debtor, and we, we agree people who owe their debts ought to pay their debts. Sure. But if you, but you still have a right to know. You have a right to know who you owe the debt to. You're right, you have the right to know how much the debt is for. You have a right to see the paperwork yeah. that actually travels from the original creditor to the debt buyer. That has just not happened. And you know, it turns out that a lot of these folks, maybe, maybe sometimes almost half of the ones who get sued don't actually owe the debt. They either already paid it, yeah. it was discharged in bankruptcy, sure. or something else, or it's not the right amount. Uh, and frequently they have no idea who this debt buyer even is. And a lot of time these debt buyers are buying the debt for pennies on the dollar and, and can be aggressive in collecting, right? Absolutely. Yeah. And it can be extremely unpleasant. Student debt, also a big issue with you. And, and, and what can you tell us about student debt legislation? Well, student debt now is at $1.3 trillion oh, goodness, in yeah. the United States. And in Oregon, the average amount of debt owed by any college student at the end of the time, and hopefully they have graduated, so at yeah. least they have a job or the potential for a job to sure. pay back the debt, is around $27,000. Uh, but many owe much, much more than that. And often you don't know, again, it's kind of not that different in a way from the debt buyer's discussion, in that you have the right to know. You have the right to know how much debt you have incurred. Mm -hmm. You have a right to know how much you're going to be required to pay yeah. when you're done with school. And there's a lot of information you should know before you owe. Let's face it. College kids and often their parents are not all that financially literate when right. it comes to these kinds of things. And so this bill would require the universities, who are actually getting the benefit of sure. the money, sure. the loan money, at least a lot of it, um, require them to provide the students and their family with this information up front. And it's proven in other states to actually reduce the amount of money that people borrow. Yeah, we, because you yeah. can actually start thinking about ways in which you can save money. Maybe you don't need that fancy apartment right. during college. <laughs> Maybe I don't Maybe need this much. Maybe you can cook your own food yeah. instead of going to a restaurant. There's a guy who lived on Top Ramen for three years. I there can tell go. you it's good advice. Okay, also a bill that tries to better understand racial profiling by police in Oregon and requiring police departments to collect data about traffic stops. And as we discuss this in the news, and we're a little surprised that some of that data or that data is not already mm -hmm. being collected, maybe partially. Tell us about your involvement in that and what you hope to accomplish with this. Right. Well, a couple of sessions ago, the legislature did pass a law making um, profiling by police, by yes. law enforcement, illegal. So you can't just stop somebody, either a pedestrian or a vehicle, for uh, an illegal reason, for right. on the basis of, of you know racial or religious or any one of 13 categories, sure. including even homelessness. Yeah. That's one of the categories. Is it? But that you know, a law in and of itself isn't enough. You've got to be able to enforce that law. And how do you demonstrate that there's a pattern or a practice of unlawful police profiling? So that's what I'm involved with. And I've been leading a task force for the last almost two years. We now have proposed legislation that requires data collection, as you mentioned, on the part of all of our police agencies, not just the Oregon State Police, which has done a very good job mm -hmm. of collecting data, as have a couple of other, some of the larger agencies. But it just hasn't been done across the board. And if you don't know who you're stopping and you don't know uh, whether what, what the police are asking them for, are they asking to search? What are they asking to search? What is the outcome? You can't really tell whether there is profiling going on. So we're going to require, if the legislature uh, sees fit to pass this bill, uh, statewide data collection. Uh, we're going to, and it's not onerous, it takes 30 seconds on the part of a yeah, police officer. Right. And we're going to require training of all police, not just the new recruits, but all of the police in all the agencies on implicit bias, on cultural competency, on the kinds of issues that are essential in order for us to really move forward in a way that, ha that where we have an equal, fair and equal treatment of anyone who gets stopped by the police. And is this bill necessary, not because there is racial profiling going on, but because we don't know, as you mentioned, because we need to know and have that information before any decisions can be made. We know, and
anecdotally that there is sure. quite a bit of racial profiling going on in this state, but we don't know it as a pattern or a practice right. that we can really address in a, in a more formal way. That's right. Okay. Um, but we do know that there's profiling. Sure, sure. Elder abuse and, and a new unit that has been developed in your office. Congratulations. Tell us about the commitment to elder abuse. Well, you're going to get the biggest smile from me there because I was so pleased to get the elder abuse unit. On the other hand, it's a horrible thing. Yeah. And it is another epidemic that we have in our state. Uh, year before last, there were 34,000 complaints of elder abuse in Oregon. I'm not sure of any updated numbers on that. But of those, about 4,000 were substantiated as cases that could have been brought even as criminal cases. We're now going to be able to do that. And we're starting to do that. We've worked very closely with ARP and with Elders in Action and other organizations. We partner very well. We do scam jams around the yeah, state where yeah. we teach our seniors how to avoid getting scammed. But the problem is a lot of them are getting scammed by their very own family, mm -hmm. by their very own caretakers. And that can be, that can and often is criminal. And so we now have a unit that's actually investigating and prosecuting these cases around the state. And we are helping DAs and their, their deputy um, investigators and lawyers ha manage these cases. These can be very complex fraud cases. And we have, in addition to a full-time prosecutor, we have two full-time analysts, investigators, who can actually make these cases go to the bank records. These people don't make the, the oh, seniors are wonderful, but they don't make the best witnesses right, a lot of right, times. Right. They maybe don't remember, maybe they're afraid, don't really necessarily want to yeah. think on their relatives, yeah. Yeah. but in fact, their relatives haven't been serving them in a fiduciary capacity. And it's just too bad that this is necessary, but this, this unit right. will be hugely advantageous. Well, okay. I really want to appreciate the legislature for yeah. giving us the funding for this. Let's talk briefly about uh, the resignation of John Kitzhaber and, and your office stepping back from the investigation into that because the federal investigation took over. Right. Uh, statute of limitations coming up on that. Is there anything you can tell us about the federal investigation if they're still considering criminal yeah. charges? Um, from what I understand, it's still ongoing. We were able to assist in providing something like four million records from different yes. state agencies that, uh, frankly, it takes time to review those, and that's what I understand the FBI and the U.S. Attorney's Office is continuing to do. Uh, I think it's unfortunate it's taken this long, but uh, that's what sometimes it takes in order to do a thorough, a thorough job. That is a lot of records, and it leads us into public records, and yes. a big part of the responsibility is providing public records in the state of Oregon, and your office is, is leading that charge. Tell us about your commitment to that. Well, you know, my predecessor gave it the big college try, but sure. he did not succeed. And I wanted to uh, give it a little bit of time to figure out what the best approach was so that we could really make some inroads. 40 plus years ago, the Oregon Public Records Act uh, went into effect. And I, as a young lawyer, actually handled a case that, I, that still gets cited today. I'm very proud of that. But the bottom line is that we've gone from 55 exemptions to over 500 exemptions yeah. in Oregon. And we don't have deadlines for production of records, so sometimes it just takes too darn long and costs too much. Sure. So we have some legislation. Uh, we're very pleased that it's moving forward. Uh, again, some amendments uh, going on. You kind of caught me right in the yeah, middle right, of the sure. legislative session. But I'm very hopeful that our profiling legislation, that our public records legislation, our student debt, our opioids, and our debt uh, buyer legislation will all go through at least with some semblance of what we are proposing. And just a few seconds left, but it is five days and ten days or a reason to explain uh, the, That's right. The time frame. You have to acknowledge within five days the receipt of the request for the public records, and Got within it. ten days after that, either produce them or explain why you're not. Journalists will probably support that as well. We thank you so they much do. for being with us. So <laughs> many great issues, and Pleasure a thank you here. on behalf of Oregon for your work. Thank, thank you, for, you for joining us tonight on Straight Talk as well. Laura Porter will be back next week. Have a great weekend.